All right, in this video, we're going to see how to verify the solution to an initial value problem. This is example 6b from the book. And the function we think is a solution is y equals x squared over 3 plus x minus 1. The differential equation we're trying to see if it's a solution to is y double prime equals x squared minus xy prime plus y plus 1 all over x squared. And then we have two initial conditions since it's a second order ODE. Right? The function should be 1 third at 1 and it, the derivative should be 5 thirds at 1. So we first want to see what the derivatives of this function are. Since there's a first and a second derivative in the ODE, we obviously need the first and second derivative to check. It's a polynomial, so it's actually pretty easy to take derivatives of. Right, so let's see, first derivative is just x over 3. Right? Oh, 2. 2x two over 3 plus 1. Now do another derivative, and it should just be 2 thirds. So we now have expressions for the first derivative, the second derivative, and the original function. If those satisfy this differential equation, then it is by definition a substitution. So we will start with this. So we'll take this differential equation and let's substitute stuff in. So we put in two-thirds for the second derivative. And obviously you want to use parentheses when substituting in situations like this. So that first derivative is two-thirds x plus one. And then the function itself goes right here. We don't really need parentheses there, right? Because it's just being added. But if what you're substituting in for was being multiplied or subtracted or anything like that, you'd want to put it in parentheses. Is that big enough for people to see? Notice that you should have an equation of one variable when you've done this right. It's a lot of times going to be x, but it could be t. And if you're good, maybe you can look right at that and tell whether it's an identity or a true statement for all values of x. Um, but that's what we're looking for. Uh, if not, you need to do some simplifying. Let's simplify this. Yes. That's what I was thinking. We would simplify the right, and hopefully yeah. we'll get two-thirds equals two-thirds. But I mean, that's not actually taking advantage of the first and second conditions? It's right. That doesn't take advantage of the initial conditions, so it's, we're not completely done at that point. So we, we first verify that, that the solution is a solution, and after we verify that, we then, is that what kind of we're doing there? Right. And you could argue that maybe you should check the initial conditions first. If you find out that you're making a mistake with finding the value of c, in this case, negative 1, right? That's, that's your constant. If you're finding you're making a mistake more with finding that number, then maybe you would just check this first, because then you'll find your mistake sooner. Uh, and maybe that's all you need to check. Um, it, it was more or less, I figured I'd tackle the, the harder part first. That's why I did this first. All right, so um, we have this. Let's go ahead and multiply to distribute here. How about that? So we've got a negative x. I'm going to multiply. And we'll get negative 2 thirds x squared minus x. All right. So 
negative x times 2 thirds x, negative 2 thirds x squared. Negative x times positive 1, negative x. Let's just stay in this line right here. Combine like terms in the numerator. We've got x squared minus 2 thirds x squared plus 1 third x squared. What's that going to be? That's 1 minus 2 thirds, which is 1 third, plus 1 third, which is 2 thirds. That might just be the 2 thirds we need. Those are, of course, x squared terms. The x's just cancel out, right? Negative x, positive x, and the ones cancel out. So it is going to be a solution, right? Because the bottom is just x squared. So the x squared up here and the x squared down there cancel. And you should just get 2 thirds. check mark to put on here. <coughs> That's what you're looking for, right? Same number on both sides. The variables should completely disappear. And you should have the same constant on both sides. 0 equals 0, 1 equals 1, 2 thirds equals 2 thirds. Which is what you get at the end of the day with an algebraic equation, right? When you put the number in, at the end of the day you should get number equals number. So we know that function is a solution to that differential equation, but not necessarily the initial value problem, which bundles the equation with these initial conditions. These are just function evaluations, but we need to check both of them. So let's take the function, which we're pretty sure is the solution, and evaluate it at 1. Right, and this is pre-calc stuff so it should be pretty easy. Just replacing x with 1. Simplifying, that's 1 third plus 1 minus 1 should be 1 third. Which is what we wanted, right? Uh, should be equal to 1 third. Yeah. Let's do the same thing with the derivative. Replacing x with 1. That's 2 thirds plus 1, which is 5 thirds. And that's what we wanted there. So, it's sort of a concluding statement. IVP being initial value problem. Lots of acronyms in this thing. ODE, IVP, you might say stuff like that. That's good.